talk about uh, this Operation Whistling Pig. Uh, the uh, Yahoo News put out a really detailed story on this. And, uh, you know, you, you got to like read this with a grain of salt because a lot of these statements and everything in this story is coming from the ICE agent that was spying on journalists. And he really doesn't think he did anything wrong. But I think, you know, as they just report his quotes as they are, it's very telling. So Operation Whistling Pig was started by ICE agent Jeffrey Rambo, and he was, let me make sure I get this right, uh, assigned to the Customs and Border Patrol National Targeting Center and then the Counter Network Division, and the goal of the Counter Network Division was to be the bridge between law enforcement, like I guess more local law enforcement, and uh, the intelligence community. And so, you know, he would email people, I guess, like the NSA, CIA, FBI, or things like that, and, you know, ask them questions and then pass, you know, relevant information on to um, the 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 local law enforcement but then no way is what happened here and so uh this story uh highlights the uh, ollie Watkins, who is a national security reporter she's you know early in the trump days one of these people that just comes out of nowhere and explodes through the rains uh, i think she at one point maybe she was at like huffpo and then uh, ends up at, at ultimately at politico and she's connected by uh, Jeffrey Rambo, but using the alias, I think James Bradley, and they go and they they meet at you know some little speakeasy type place in Washington D.C. and uh, you know they, they talk there, and you know he says he works for the U.S. government, but what he's trying to do is trying to turn Ali Watkins essentially into a source uh, for him where he's hoping that he could feed her stories where she will overstate the U.S. ability to enforce, um, you know, rules against forced labor in Latin America. And I guess his idea or hope is that this would act as a deterrence uh, for people, I guess, coming to the United States and people in, you know, subjecting other people to forced labor, you know, if you think that uh, the U.S. could, uh, you know, it, all right, here's a good, like, it's a drug dog thing, right? Like, if, uh, the, you know, like, somebody puts out a news story that says, like, you know, a drug dog could, you know, detect marijuana within a five-mile radius, right? And then the news just runs this everywhere, like, it may have the impact of, uh, you know, people not smoking weed as much because they're afraid that they're definitely going to get caught if it happens. But at the same time, it's going to, you know, create a completely false narrative. The news is lying at the behest of the cops, which, you know, in this case, it may be, uh, you know, helpful to society at large, you know, or I guess like, you know, you could make that utilitarian argument or something like that. Of course, I'm appalled and disagree with it, but, you know, you can make that argument. Uh, of course, who knows if next time it's going to be more abusive or something like that, but you also don't know the unintended consequences. If people believe drug dogs are completely infallible, then anytime the cops are like, oh, we got a drug dog involved and it smelled something, you know, people routinely end up in jail for months at a time because a drug dog hit on something and then cops, you know, were able to turn up a positive, you know, drug test on a false positive and you know, the, these kind of things are going on all the time because of the false narrative of how accurate drug dogs are, right? And so, um, John Rambo, or Jeffrey Rambo, excuse me, says, uh, I thought it was, I, I thought, okay, I'll use Ali Watkins. And, you know, that was his plan to feed her information. And it seemed like he expected her to cooperate to some extent to understand that some of this information was going to be false. Uh, but in order to portray the narrative that Customs and Border Patrol wanted portrayed in the U.S. media, you know, this is really, really disturbing stuff going on here, especially if you think about it, like, 
uh, right now during the Biden administration, even like there's not a lot of reporting going on at what's happening at the southern border. And, uh, you know, the, the conditions down there are really rough. Uh, there's record numbers of kids going through the, the U.S. border control system in this past year. Uh, tens of thousands of kids with no adults uh, coming with them are actually, I think, 122,000 uh, children with no adults coming with them uh, going through, you know, the, these centers. And there's almost no media involvement whatsoever and maybe it's because customs and border uh, protection is you know uh just co-opting all the media and feeding them the stories that they want to feed them uh to create the narratives that they want and under the justification oh make the world better place that people think what we want them to think um so once you know, Rambo starts to, you know, be interested in Ollie Watkins. Uh, he vets her. And he says in this story, there is no policy for vetting. Uh, just, you know, you, you look into it. And you, he says there's no difference in how you would look into a journalist versus how you would look into a terrorist if you're vetting them. And so we we really see this. Uh, they actually uncover that Ali Watkins, and, and this seems very inappropriate to me, by the way. Uh, I'm not trying to you know justify what she's doing. I'm just saying that you know a government secret spy uh, you know effort shouldn't be you know the one to turn this up. But uh, Ali Watkins was having an affair with a married um, high ranking congressional staffer. And so, you know, while there certainly is something on the journalistic ethical side of that that is definitely inappropriate, uh, th that isn't criminal. It's it, because in no way do they have any evidence, never turn up any evidence that uh, this affair is netting her any kind of information that she otherwise wouldn't be able to obtain. Right. You know, she's not sleeping with them for information. They're sleeping together. Um, but it's a it's an unrelated thing. They discover this by like, you know, where they're going for flights and stuff like that. Uh, that, you know, they find out who Ali Watkins uh, contacts are in the media, like Ariel uh, Huffington and people within the AP. And so, you know, this is a very significant amount of uh, intrusion into her personal life that happened without warrants, without, you know, cause for thinking that she committed any crime whatsoever. It was just out of them wanting to use her uh, to run psyops that they, you know, conducted this level of surveillance. It, it's absolutely insane that this is going on and that, you know, this isn't a much larger uh, news story that we have going on. Now, there was a reporting to all of this by either the Department of Homeland Security or uh uh, CPD, and they found that it was all, you know, maybe not great. And we, they'd say they don't run psyops, but it was all, uh, you know, above board or whatever. But really, th this should have been expected. Apparently, the division that uh, Rambo was working in, his supervisor um, called the team Wolf, short for way out in left field, and being an expression that, you know, you're just out there, no one's, there's no like, um, regulations or rules are, are really, you, you know, you're kind of just out there on your own doing what you're doing and, and you know, nobody's really going to stop you or anything like that. So, you know, as far as it goes, it's not like Ali Watkins life was ruined or anything like that through this, uh, you know, the affair was exposed, but again, you know, it's probably <laughs> something that should have been public attention anyways. And, uh, certainly should be an embarrassment for Politico if their reporters are sleeping, uh, you know, with married, uh, congressional staffers. But other than that, you know, this is, uh, this is just a, a crazy amount of power that, uh, the, the, uh, immigration enforcement has and apparently could carry out at will. And, and you know, through a, a agency or through a division of uh, CPD that people really don't know about, you know, they know about the NSA, but, you know, this is, you know, fairly intrusive as well. And, you know, CIA like operations being carried out in America by our, you know, police agencies and all that. So, 
I think that I think that covers what I had on this. Um, oh, one one other thing I want to note is that in this article, uh, Rambo Jeffrey Rambo was upset with Ali Watkins because after they had drinks the initial time they met under his false name, she did exactly what I would have done: went back to the bar in the Ned's name and asked the bartender for the receipt of the guy that she was having drinks with, and the idiot used his actual credit card, didn't pay with cash, and so she got his real name and found out who he was and what he was doing so uh you know that's just a, an interesting little trick if if anybody is interested in that uh rambo again was very upset by this and so it's this weird double standard right where the guy sees nothing wrong with what he did to ali Watkins and uh the surveillance of all the other journalists that that went on uh but at the same time there's um there is you, you know somebody just finds out his credit card and you know the name from his credit card after he had drinks with her uh and he's all upset that the person you know i mean maybe the bartender shouldn't have done it but i'm really not surprised that they didn't 